Today we will be taking a look at French Leclerc tank, that is, the latest variant in service called Series XXY, and we will see if it is any good in modern era. While not most common, Series XXY is the latest one, and most modern Leclerc variant currently in service. So, how good is its protection? Well, it got changed compared to previous variant. The tungsten was added to the armor composition, and to compensate for the weight gain, lots of steel has been replaced with titanium. And, according to some French experts, the armor is rated around 650 to 700 mm against tip FSDS projectiles, and 1100 to 1200 mm against heat projectiles. But whether the changes have been applied to the bolt hull and turret, or just the turret, is unknown. If hull remains as in previous variant, then the armor rating would be around 600 mm. But nevertheless, there is one problem with the hull. Two thirds of the lower front plate is lacking composite armor, which is not a small target and makes it into a big weak spot. The sides of the turret are protected with composite armor, which offers protection against older heat projectiles and maybe some more modern ones, if engaged on 30 degrees arc. Also, the sides of the hull have composite blocks on the front, which are there to offer protection against projectiles from when the tank is engaged from the same arc. The rest of the hull is lacking composite armor. There are side skirts that offer some protection against heat projectiles, but they don't work against APFSDS projectiles. So any hit on the side hull from APFSDS projectile would be fatal for the tank. The turret ammunition is additionally protected with blowout panels, which increases the crew safety. But just like in Leopard 2, there is another stowage in front of the hull, which, if struck directly, would result in catastrophic explosion and kill everyone inside. So, overall the protection is not that great. The armor is insufficient to stop modern APFSDS projectiles, and it has weak spots that can be engaged with older projectiles. The heat protection is somewhat decent since it can stop most of heat projectiles, and has extra protection on sides, so it is not that bad. Keep in mind that only the latest APFSDS projectiles would be able to penetrate the tank. Anything older wouldn't be enough. Now we will take a look at firepower. The tank is armed with Giat CN120 L52 smoothbore gun that can fire OFL120 F2 APFSDS projectile that, depending on the source, has from 650 to 690 mm penetration at 2 km range. The gun is good, better than L44 guns since it is longer and can launch same projectiles like L44 but with higher velocity, resulting in higher penetration. In its arsenal it also has M3M, which is a multi-purpose high-explosive projectile, which can be switched between three modes. One for explosion on direct impact, one with a delay and another with air bursting. That high-explosive projectile is on par with the latest high-explosive projectiles in the world. The firepower is not that great. First off, the OFL 120 F2 is produced in limited numbers and are reserved for conflicts with better equipped countries since OFL 120 F1 is good enough for their current operations. But even F2 is not that good against most modern tanks since the penetration is not high enough to penetrate most of them and it is not said to have any anti-EREA capability so the projectile is not that great. But as I said before, high explosive projectile is pretty good. The fire control system of the tank is somewhat good. Gunner has second generation thermal imaging system and so does the commander's CATV, which makes its fire control system to be on par with most of the modern tanks. The commander's station also has battle management system that provides real-time situation of the surrounding battlefield. The tank lacks remotely operated machine gun for commander, so commander has to expose himself in order to use it, that is, if it is mounted in the first place. The tank weighs 58 tons and has maximum speed of 72 km per hour. It is powered with V8X 1500 Hyperbar engine, with 1500 horsepower and maximum torque of 4850 Nm, which gives the tank great mobility. But being that it uses Hyperbar engine, it weighs more fuel than standard diesel engine, and it makes the maximum range of the tank lower compared to the other tanks, but the mobility is great anyway. 
So, in conclusion, the Leclerc is not that bad, but still it is not that great either. It lacks many features the modern tanks have and has problematic weak spots, even tanks with all the projectiles can exploit. The firepower is not bad and can deal with most of the tanks on the modern battlefield, but it is bad for more modern tanks that are currently in service. But its anti-infantry capability is good enough. But also the problem is that XXY is the minority in French tank arsenal, so France has to act about its tanks or it will be left with obsolete 1st and 2nd series of Leclerc's. And XXY is not good enough, they need new APFSDS projectiles and they need to further enhance the protection if they want to keep them. Also, fire control system needs to be upgraded with 3rd generation thermal imaging systems, but nevertheless the tank has some potential. But maybe a new tank is the best option for France. That is, if they have the budget to make it. So that concludes it. Thanks for watching. I would really appreciate if you could support me on Patreon. Link is in the description. If not, you're always welcome to join my Discord server. Link is also in the description. I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.